Today's session is going to see how to get started with the SD WAN programmability. A quick introduction about myself and Sai. I work as a technical marketing engineer for the Cisco SD WAN solution. I focus more around the network automation and the programmability capabilities of the Cisco SD WAN solution. Without further ado, let's have a quick look at the today's agenda. We're going to start off with what and why of vManage APIs so that we can level set everybody what vManage APIs offer for us. And then have a look at a Python Viptila SDK and then do a demonstration using Python Viptila SDK. Let's start off with what and why of the vManage APIs. The Cisco vManage, as most of you might have already know, that it sits in the management plane as part of the Cisco SD WAN solution. And then it exposes the standard REST APIs using which we can integrate with all of our third party applications. It also exposes web hooks in order to get the notification for alarms in real time, using which we could integrate with our chat ops monitoring tools like WebExpeeds. On the southbound side, we manage users netconf in order to either push the configuration to the edge routers, and that's your Viptela V edge routers or the XESD WAN routers. And it also uses netconf to pull this operational statistics from these edge routers. To use REST APIs, a good place to first start off would be to use the API docs on the inbuilt Swagger UI on a lab we manage. So on your vManage instance, you could just do vManage IP address and then slash API docs, which would list you all the list of APIs that are supported on that specific vManage release. We also have the new API documentation on the Cisco developer.cisco.com site, which we're going to cover during the demonstration time. A couple of other options that we have to work with the vManage APIs. I mean, as for anybody starting with Postman, it's the best place to learn about APIs so that we know how the request and response would look like for a specific API endpoint, and then use that um, within our automation scripts that we would build using Python or any other language further to have a network automation toolkit for us. And the rest part of the session, we're going to focus more around the Python Viptela SDK, like how it's been structured and what are the various use cases the SDK can offer for us. And finally, you could also use the Swagger UI on a vManage and run the API calls on your existing vManage through the API docs. With that, let's move on to the Python Viptela SDK. So it's a WebNet community project which is being contributed actively from various Cisco sales team members or your customer experience team members and the technical marketing engineers. And what the whole idea that we had when we started developing this SDK was how do we make it like really easy to somebody to consume this we manage APIs either through the Python scripts or through their uh, having a click-based CLI interface or having it as part of the Ansible modules. It's on PyPy, so though it's really easy to install. All we would have to do is pit three install the Pilla, and then the SDK will be part of your local Python virtual environment. Let's have a quick look at a high-level structure of how the SDK has been developed around. So we have an API directory which would use all these raw vManage APIs in order to communicate with the vManage instance. And then you have a data directory which has the functions which can be used to convert some of the unique identifiers like your template ID to a template name. Then we have the app directory which has the Python code that's related to the various use cases like exporting and importing your templates and policies from a file. Then we have a CLI directory, which has the all code that around the click-based CLI wrapper, using which we can interact with SDK. 
And then finally, we have the utilities directly, uh, which would have various utilities to convert lists to dictionaries for passing various things related to uh, templates and policies. From the developer standpoint of view, I think the most common directory that we would like to look at would be on API directory. You could see what raw manage APIs are used with the various functions. Or you would also would like to look at the CLI directory to see how the click-based CLI wrapper is being implemented on the SDK functions. And then obviously on the data and apps is where you would have the core logic around this uh, managing templates and policies uh, and variables. A couple of use cases uh, which we targeted uh, when we started developing this SDK was how do we attach the templates to end devices programmatically? So we, this is going to be even uh, touched during the demo time. We're going to see how do we attach certain devices to certain templates, and how do we move devices from one device template to another device template using SDK. So we tried making that um, as easy operation through the SDK functions that we have developed. So we're going to touch upon that during the demo time. And then some of the other main use cases are around how do we back up and restore the templates and policies or the device variables that we have using SDK functions. Um, some of the other use cases was also to build a wrapper on top of the real-time monitoring APIs that we have so that you could run these real-time API calls through the SDK CLI interface. Um, the final use case I can think of that could be really powerful is how do you update the application aware routing policies using the SDK functions. So that way you could have your developer defining how the application routing policy should look like for a specific application, and then just run the SDK commands using which we could trigger this uh, policy change to existing we manage. Then the next best place for you to uh, explore the SDBank programmability would be to start on the SDK functions. So here in the postman, we would have the environment where we would provide my existing vManage IP address, the login credentials, and the port on which the vManage is operating. I'm using the new Cisco DevNet 19.2 sandbox in order to run the API calls in NIST. Once we have the values updated in the postman environment, we would have to do as just run a post request to the specific authentication API endpoint with a username and password in the payload. Once we do that, we get 200 OK as a response and we get a session cookie. And the next API call, we would run this token uh, get request so that way we get to know what is the token that's associated with this specific user session. So once I do this, uh, we would have a token as a response. We also have written a sample test case as part of this Postman collection, so it would automatically update your Postman environment with the response of the token that we get as part of this API calls. So if you see now in your environment, you would see this new XSFR token that's being updated. So moving forward, we would use this token as part of the request headers and send that to the vManage so that the user session would now be validated across the session cookie and the session token. Now let's run a sample API call against the inventory API that we have. So HTTPS vManage port data service device. And in the headers, we would have added this XSRF token, which gets the value from the Postman environment. And once we do a send, on this, we get the response to the complete inventory, like what's the system ID address of your vManage, um, and what, all the details that we can think of, like site ID or the latitude and longitude of details for the specific vManage instance. So we get all the details about the complete inventory, controllers, and also the edge routers that are part of this SD-WAN solution fabric. And with that, let's move on to the terminal and then run some of the SDK functions for us. So the same way like how we have provided the input parameters of vManage login credentials in the Postman environment, 
we would have to follow something similar even for SDK to let the SDK know what's the managed instance against which we would be running these various API calls. The way we could do that is just build a shell script with all these export commands that are related to the host, which is your host IP address, or it could be a DNS domain name um, in a specific case. And then the port number on which the vManage is accessible, and the username and password details uh, for the specific vManage. And you could do the source and then give that shell script as an input, and then your environment would be updated with this login credentials and the vManage host details. Once we do that, um, uh, I, I've already installed the Vuptela package in my Python virtual environment, so you would see this. So once you do the pip 3 install Vuptela, you would have the latest Python Vuptela SDK release, that's 0.3.1, that we released just a few weeks ago. Um, that will be installed on your Python local virtual environment. Once you have that, you could do the vManage as the initial base command entry to see all the options that SDK supports. So we have various options that we can think of related to show commands and things related to export and import of attachments, which we are going to see in the demo today. But before we get to a couple of options, you could either use the shell script file that I was showing earlier to update the environment with the vManage host details and the login credentials, or use this host port and the username uh, as an option command in the click-based CLI interface. Since I've already given the uh, set the environment with the existing login credential details and the username and password, we don't have to provide that as part of the command that we could be running. But now we're going to see how to attach a template to the existing set of devices. Before we run SDK, let's have a look at the vManage and then see what's the current state. So as most of you are already familiar with the vManage dashboard, if you go to the vManage configuration and templates, you would see the existing list of templates that we have configured. So what we're going to do in the specific use case is attach this template to two devices using the SDK. So now when you're trying to attach this template to an existing devices, as an obvious input, that we will have to let the SDK know what is the device UID value and what's the template name. And then if the template is using various variables, what are those values that are associated to those variables? So let's see how we are going to do that. So here is the YAML file structure using which we would provide the list of UIDs and the templates that are associated to that specific device. And then the list of variable values will be used as part of the device template. So if you see here, for the site one, CH1, with this specific unique identifier value, you're going to have the base parameters of system IP, site ID, and the template name that will be attached to this particular device. We're going to have this list of devices as part of this channel file. And the SDK has been built in such a way that it's intelligent to identify if the device is already attached or not to a given template. So for example, in this case, this particular DCCH1 device that we have here, if you see what we're saying as part of this YAML definition file is that it should be attached to this specific template. Uh, let's go back to this vManage. If you can see here, it's already attached to the specific device with the host name and site ID. So we're not going to make any changes to the devices to which the templates are already attached. So it will only see what are the devices that does not have templates attached, and then it will push those changes to those devices. All right, now let's see how do we run that command. So you do the remanage import attachments and give the file as an input. So this was the YAML file that I was just now showing a few minutes ago on the Visual Studio. So once you run this 
specific SDK command, it triggers the API calls to the vManage to push those template changes or to the devices. So if you, once you run that and if you come to the scheduled task on vManage, you would see that there's a push feature template configuration that's active. So out of all the devices that were part of the YAML file, only these were the two devices which were not having the template attached. So we triggered that process to change the template and push that template to the specific edge routers. So it just takes a couple of seconds for us to complete this process. Yeah, and you will see now it's, it's success. So if I go back to configuration and, and templates, I could see now that the two devices are attached to this template. Let's do something more interesting, right? Um, maybe now you have developed a new device template uh, to which you would like to attach one of the existing devices. So let's see how we can use the SDK to move one device from this template to another template. So I had created a copy of this particular template with the new prefix, like definite create in the name. So all I'm going to do now is update my YAML file that we have to this particular site to CH router. I'm giving the new template name that should be attached to these edge routers. So um, if we rerun the script or the Python SDK, rather, it's intelligent enough now to find out, okay, for the one router that is part of that YAML file definition, there's a change in the template that it has to be attached with. So let's run the API calls to push the new template to that device. So if I go back to the vManage, and the schedule task, now I would see again here, there's a template change that's being pushed to the site to see it to, to attach this new template. So, I mean, this makes it really easy for us to like have a centralized source of truth for all your template and device variables combinations, and then use the simple SDK commands, and then trigger these changes as and when you make some changes to the YAML file. Uh, that way you have the centralized repository of all your device, variables, and templates association. Then you could use the SDK as a bridge or a tool in between your vManage and your YAML file definition to maintain the sync between these two entities and make sure your SD-WAN fabric is always in sync with your centralized YAML file definitions that you have uh, from a configuration standpoint of view. So this is a configuration piece that we support as part of the SDK. But as I was saying earlier, we also have uh, support for some of the real-time API monitoring API wrapper from the SDK. So you could run a simple show commands like show org to see what your Nutella organization name that this particular vManage is part of. Or you could do vManage show OMP peers, you can always use help to see what are the other options that we support. And now you could give a system IP address of one of the devices that would give you the OMP peers for that particular router in the rest of fabric. So I have one vSmart to which yeah, that particular edge router is connected with. And we see what's the state um, of that particular OMP peer session. All right, that's it I had to cover from the demo side point of view for the Python Reptila SDK. But before I move on to the slides, I wanted to also show the new API documentation that we have uh, as part of the developer.cisco.com. So all these links are shared as part of slides, so you could always go back and refer them. So in the developer.cisco.com slash SD1, if you click on the view docs, you will be redirected to this new API documentation that we have for the SD-WAN APIs. In the reference section, you can see for all of those API endpoints that are part of the device configuration and even other categories, we have now added what should be your API payload format so that you know basically how to use APIs. Um, I mean, as a 
as design technical marketing engineering team or a product management team, the end goal for us um, at, the, at the end of the day is to make it easy for any user to consume these APIs and make your network automation journey as smooth as possible. So now we have included all the various payload response or the payload request uh, formats in the API documentation. So that once you run this API call, like template policy definition app route, you know how to basically trigger that particular API call. So you would use the specific app list and you would use the reference ID. So there's another API call in the same documentation. You would see how to create an app list. So once you create an app list, you would get the specific identifier value as a response. And then you would use it in these API calls to define an application of their routing policies. So I highly encourage you to check, check out the documentation and then um, share us the feedback on how it is and what we can do to improve further and make your network automation journey uh, as easy as we can. To wrap up, I just wanted to share some of the resource links that I've showed during the demo. So feel free to explore them and connect with me on Twitter if you have any follow-up questions on the content or on the sd band programmability in general. And I'll be more than happy to help. So the slides also have the subsequent uh, links to the code exchange repositories where the Python Viptela SDK is hosted and some of the links related to the DevNet learning labs and sandboxes related to sd band With that, Thank you so much for your time for joining this DevNet Create virtual event. I hope you have the rest of your great day. Thank you.